So, I don't know how to say this, but it seems like... <laughs> Ever since I got my hair cut, like, you know, it's, what, three inches, two and a half inches? But, you know, of course, when I get my hair cut real short, like, there's always some vapid woman in the salon going, you're so brave. Because when I cut it, it was down, like, past my shoulder. But, sorry about the lighting. It's, like, 4 a.m. But, yeah, so, I, I don't know what it is. But apparently that's, like, the deciding factor. Which is so crazy to me because, I mean, it's just hair, right? <laughs> but it seems to be the deciding factor for a lot of people and it confuses them because oh mm, I don't have a super feminine body shape I don't have much of a waist like an empire cut is my jam <laughs> um but I do have a large chest, but I suppose, like, you can fake a chest. You can put in falsies, right? I don't have very wide hips. In fact, when I did have a child, I had to have a C-section because, according to the nurses, like, the bones weren't far enough apart. Everything else was ready to go, but the bones weren't far enough apart. And, uh, you know, that's why chainsaws were invented. Neat, right? Um, not even kidding. Look it up. Uh, but looking at it in x-rays, like, it, it, mm, you know how a lot of people, like, trying to disprove LGBTQ whatever stuff is like, oh, you can tell by the bones? You can't. You can't, and I'm proof of that. Um, I have a small pelvic inlet. Hence why I couldn't give birth. I had to have a C-section. But I present female. Like, physically. I, I have a double D chest. <laughs> oh, goodness. Something just fell in my room. I think it was a stink bug. I get those. Um, they just come in the house. I don't know why. We also get ladybugs in the house and spiders. Yeah, fun. Yep, there he goes. Flying around. But anyway, um... Came to find out, like... I don't know why I didn't, like, pick up on it when... It was diagnosed, and I don't know why nobody picked on it before then. Um, this is an interesting body that I have, right? I build up muscle mass really easily, and I'm shaped like a refrigerator. Like, <laughs> I have no waist, I have a chest, and I have a butt, but my hips aren't very wide, and I have really small feet and really small hands, like really small. My ring size is four and a quarter. That's pretty small. My shoe size is a five and a half. It used to be a five until I got pregnant and my feet swelled. Yeah. Um, so, but before I had my child, I was going through fertility treatments. And mm, during that, they said my testosterone was too high for my gender. Which isn't the first time I had heard that. I had had my thyroid tested because there are thyroid issues that kind of run in my family. And I was putting on a lot of weight. Turns out I was sleepwalking and eating in my sleep. Yep, happens. Um, but during the fertility treatment and all that, they decided to remove endometriosis. Right, which is the lining of the uterus growing on the outside and in other places of your body and bleeding and causing a lot of bloating and just 
cramps and nastiness. So they go in and they, you know, scrape it all up. They also went into the fallopian tubes and made sure that they weren't, like, barricaded or anything, which they're not. I mean, like, I double ovulate, man. A seven-day period is nothing to me. I've had periods less than a week apart. Neat. But what they found... Um, I'm having trouble finding on the documentation... But I'm sure they documented it. I'm just not finding the right words. Um, because the doctor was extremely accusatory. Um, he said, well, you know, you're infertile. You'll have to have a hysterectomy by 40. And we found something. I'm like, oh, okay, what did you find? He goes, well, we found and removed vestigial testes of size. And I'm like, okay but like throughout the conversation he kept like repeating it saying of size so apparently i had large balls right but they were vestigial so they were never going to work but the funny thing about that is um female gametes always um develop first in a fetus and male sex organs develop second so was I supposed to be a boy? Is that what's going on here? Um, I do kind of have a strong jawline. And a nose. And very thin lips. I could probably get away with dressing like a boy. Especially if I use a slightly deeper voice. Just kind of... <clears throat> Open up your throat and relax. That sounds gay, doesn't it? Um, but I could pass. Probably. Um, what does that say about every single person that's ever dated me? Ooh. And then, like, what am I? Some sort of unicorn? Because I did have a child. I do have a functioning uterus, you know. But I also had balls. And so I looked at my birth uh, record, not birth certificate, right? The the actual paper that's in the room when you're born that they fill out, like, to make sure you can feel pain and put down your measurements and, you know, check your color and your cry and all that, right? Right. So on the line where it says gender, because there's one that says gender... Or, no, it says genitalia. And then it says sex. A couple of lines below that. It's an older form. Right? And it's a copy. It's not even the original form. Because it's a legal document. Um, but. Under genitals. It has some weird little squiggle. And then a female symbol. Right? I'm old. Uh, I was born in the 80s, right? And uh, early 80s. And back then, mm, when you found one with both, you just cut off the male part and you just ran with it. And you probably wouldn't even document it and you definitely wouldn't tell the mother. You don't want to stress them out because women are fragile. Um... What's that weird squiggle? It's not an initial because it's not the doctor's initials. And you don't have to have a second initial for that. Otherwise, there would be a line for it, you know? And there's not. It was just within the box. If it was a mistake, there would have been a single line through it. I work in the medical field. Then you only put a single line because if you scribble through it, it looks like you're trying to cover something up. So you write it. You do a single line. And if you have to, you initial by that line. But that's not what's there. That's not what's there. I'm thinking it's shorthand for something, but I can't read what it says. And if I was that young and that happened, there would be no scarring. I'd be too young for it to scar. And in fact, like, they used to not give babies any sort of, um, 
anesthetic when they did surgery on them because they didn't think babies could feel pain. Also a real thing. Look it up. Uh, so, like, what am I? What am I, right? I mean, I guess I'm female, technically. Never felt it, though. And what if I was never supposed to be? What if I was a boy? What if I was supposed to be a boy? No wonder I felt so uncomfortable in all those dresses my mom jammed me into. God, I hate dresses. They don't look good on me. I don't have the figure for it. Imagine. But a cute little girl, like, you know, all of five, and you just, you want to put them in little dresses? I hated them. I tore them off, and I mean I tore them off, because if I heard stitching just ripping, I know I didn't have to wear it again. Yeah. I preferred overalls and Tonka trucks and bucket of army men. And that carried over. Like, even in high school, I was just beating people up. I wasn't a bully, no. I mean, like, I beat up bullies, though. That's how the drug dealer ended up in his locker. Picking on some kid. I didn't even know the kid. But he's, like, doing the old school, like, slap the books out of his hand. And then push him to the ground. I'm like, hey. He's like, what? I'm like, what are you doing? He goes, what's it look like? And I bum rushed him into his own locker. And I always had a master lock on me. Ooh, buddy, you ain't getting out. And it was in the basement. <laughs> I knew I was going to get away with it. The only reason they found him is because the locker was smoking, so somebody pulled the fire alarm. And, uh, yeah, he was getting high on his own supply. Not a good plan, buddy. Yeah, he walked out in cuffs. The principal called me to his office, throws the lock down, and goes, why? Why? I go, I mean, he was the school drug dealer. I was just kind of doing a service. I'm like, and he was picking on a kid. He was being a bully. He deserved it. I said, I never do anything without somebody deserving it anyway. You know that. He's like, we had to use the jaws of life because you used a master lock. I said, my hands are clean. You didn't catch me doing it. You can't prove that's mine. And he just, <sighs> I said, what, are you going to call my parents? He goes, no. Nobody wants to deal with your parents. You know that. I'm legit, they don't. My parents are sociopaths. Like, they'll just scream at you until they get their way. <laughs> mm. And, uh, he was like, look, next time, just use a combination lock. There's keys for those. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> but yeah, I... I build up muscle mass, easy. Like, to this day, it's useful because I work in the medical field and I specifically work at a um, mental hospital. So, like, yeah, I gotta move people. Even before that, I worked at a retirement home. You gotta move bodies. Kind of useful to just be able to do that. But... Like... Man, I just, the looks I get sometimes are really unnerving. Like, men are confused. They're, they don't want to be attracted, but they're, they're not sure if they should be. I've had men, like, follow me to a bathroom just to see which one I use. Would it even matter? I can use whichever one I want. It, like, it's a restroom. Doesn't really matter. What if it's a non-gendered bathroom? gonna break down the door jeez <laughs> like you could just ask and it doesn't matter anyway attraction is attraction it doesn't matter like if you should or shouldn't right because the attraction is just there speaking of that so 
being that I work in the medical field, I work with a lot of other females. Generally speaking, there's not a lot of male CNAs. Even at retirement homes, there's not a lot of males. But, mm, the girls are attracted to me. And I'm not just, it, it's weird because they're aggressively attracted to me. They want, I, look, I know what they want. They want me to be a man. They want me to be a man. And they want me to dom them. Which is nothing new. Everybody wants me to do that. I don't know why. I do have a kind of dominant personality. But. Uh, I want people to enjoy me. But I'm not really into the bodily fluid exchange anyway. So. Pass. I just want a companion. I want somebody to share and spend my time in life with. Cuddle, sure, I'll give you sex if you want, but don't expect me to be emotional about it. I'm not an emotional person. Mainly because, like, I've been diagnosed as having borderline personality disorder, but I've also read the DSM-5 and it doesn't quite fit. I'm more calculating than that. Guess what's next? Antisocial personality disorder. And there's no cure for that. There's not even, like, a good regimen of medications that work for that, which explains why nothing has worked. Like, Vibrid worked pretty well, and Clonopin can kind of take the edge off, but antidepressants do nothing. Nothing. Mood stabilizers do nothing. Pain meds do nothing. I need the pain meds because I have fractures in my spine and hip and foot and wrist. Um, and advanced degenerative arthritis. That's what they're calling it. It's not what it is, though. I fractured my neck in two places. That's what it is. And it's causing neuropathy and paralysis. Yay. So, unfortunately, I've talked with a nurse who has a husband that has the same problem that I do with medications. And she says, basically, it's not an allergy and it's not really a resistance, but it's that you don't digest the pain medication well. So it doesn't really work for you. I said, oh, neat. She goes, yeah, nothing's going to work. <laughs> like, ah, oh, man. And she knew her stuff, like... Um, we had a few, like, indicators of it, and yeah. So I gotta talk to my GP about that. Uh, but, yeah, the nurses, it's happened with a, a fellow CNA before, and it's happening currently with a nurse. They get really aggressive with me for no reason, and really get on my butt, really get on my dick about stuff. But, it comes down to it, where, like, I'm just playing it cool. Like, that's just my personality. I'll do what you want, how you want, when you want, whatever. I might not do it exactly the way you want, but I'll get it done, okay? And I just have a very laissez-faire attitude just because literally I don't care. I can't. Sorry, I don't really have that capacity because of the ASPD. Like, I don't... The only emotions I have left are sadness and anger so i'm kind of laissez-faire about things i just don't really care when i was diagnosed with uh, bpd they said that basically i have no apathy or i have all the apathy and no empathy so basically i don't give a care and i don't care to give a care neat uh but that should have been a major symptom of like oh that's not borderline that's antisocial like but they generally don't diagnose women as antisocial because literally it's three percent of the world's population that has antisocial and within that three percent only one percent are female but hey i'm not exactly female <laughs> mm, nature versus nurture i said both of my parents are sociopaths and they show a lot of the clinical like classical symptoms of it you know my dad's first lesson to me growing up was look out for number one because nobody else will 
Yeah, that's pretty strong. And my mother was emotionally distant is a nice way of saying it. Um, yeah. So, uh-huh. Lots of different issues here. But they all kind of work together. Like, I might know I'm crazy, so I can kind of work with it. You know, use it to my advantage. But as a result, I have this dominant, laissez-faire attitude. So I'm a bad boy. <laughs> I have a bad boy attitude. Isn't that funny? But it... Because I am so androgynous, really. Um... And I wear cologne because I like how it smells on me. It smells better on me than perfume ever does. And yeah, I'll wear men's clothing because it's more comfortable. My hips don't fit well into women's pants. They fit a lot better into men's pants. Makes sense considering the pelvic inlet. Um, so... So these nurses this and CNA and a couple of other people, honestly, they get really aggressive with me. Really aggressive. But also flirty. Because they, they get really all up on my business about my job and how to do it and when to do it and where to do it and everything. But then they joke with me and stuff. And then you can see it in their eyes, just the look. They look at me like I'm just some sort of piece of meat and they want it. It's hard to describe. But they do. And then they start talking about their families and like their connections to other people. Basically how they're tied down and why they can't do what they're doing. They're hashing it out in their mind. Why they can't do this thing. And then they come to peace with it. They realize... I'm attracted to this person, but it's a no. I can't do the thing. Mm, baby, strap-ons exist. Uh, <laughs> might not be a man, but a baby, I can still please you. <laughs> and I, I won't get con I won't get like emotionally connected either. You don't want that anyway. Yeah, so it ends up being that I'm this weird unicorn, right? Really weird unicorn. Between, like, the mental stuff and the physical stuff and just, like, the not wanting sex. Oh, but that's funny, too, because I have talents. Like I said, I have small features, right? Also, that feature small. There is a correlation. But not necessarily for that reason, but probably was underdeveloped due to having both. So, clean, wet, tight. I had an ex say that I was crushing him. And he was below average. My gyno gives me weird compliments. Every time I get a new gyno, they give me weird compliments. Like, they would know, but it's still weird. Like, she was very impressed by how toned my pelvic wall was. <laughs> right? And how tight everything was. Like, take me to dinner. <laughs> Can I have some wine? I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> same thing happened there she started telling me about her kids uh huh like I didn't ask about any of it but I'm also very flexible I have a connective tissue disorder uh it's I want to say it's Allardano's but I don't remember what the doctor actually said, but basically I'm hypermobile. I can stick my knees to my ears. Not a problem. Flesh actually gets in the way of me 
pulling it all the way up so that I can like angle it out and get my foot to my ear. Like flesh actually gets in the way. Um, and I also have a very long tongue. Now, what people want me to do with that, taste is still a thing. What are y'all doing? What are you people doing? Yeah. So I'm just this unicorn. I'm just this weird, weird unicorn. You know, I thought I was weird. And I started, like, learning more about myself and trying to disprove that I was weird. <laughs> and that's just how my life works. If it wasn't for bad luck, I'd have none at all. So I, <laughs> I found out more and more weird things about myself. Yeah, oh, and this isn't my voice, by the way. This is just the voice that I use because it matches the exterior a little bit better. Um, I'm trying to be quiet because it's AM hours and I do have housemates. But my voice has resonance, so I can only be so quiet. But if I just relax my voice... <clears throat> it's about here. It's about here. And yeah, I mean, I can add a little more smoke to it. I can add a little more resonance to it. Not by much. I mean, that's kind of a deep voice. But if you didn't see this face attached to it, what would you think? All right. It might be a little bit more of an effeminate masculine voice, but you wouldn't expect it to be coming out of a woman now, would you? Probably not. <laughs> and so, but I don't use this voice because it doesn't match. Oh, it takes no effort, though. It's a nice voice. I would think a lot of people would like it. In fact, my ex uh, enjoyed listening to my voice as he fell asleep. Kind of weird, bro. Might be a little gay. Yeah. Pretty sure he was. Or is and just is in the closet because, well, he would run to his phone when his best friend was calling, like, I didn't exist. He likes, obviously, a more masculine figure on a woman. More masculine features. Um, because his current girlfriend isn't very feminine either. Hmm. Wanted me to, you know... Like I said, every relationship, they want me to dom. And, um, yeah, just, uh, he had a gay guy call him out and, like, ask for favors. He's like, oh, wait, you're not gay? Are you sure? Yikes. I mean... I'm not gay, really, but, you know, there's pros and cons to both sexes. But I guess I would be pan because I do not care what's in your pants. Couldn't care less. As long as you actually love me, I don't care. Couldn't care less. Like I said, I'll do the thing. I'll say all the pretty words. Make it sound like I love you. I'll do all the things. Say all the things. Do everything right. Do I mean it? Well, logically, yes. But emotionally, 
I don't really contain that, so what do you want? I can't give you what I don't have. And that's where my relationships fall apart, because after a while they start to realize I don't have any emotion. And, you know, when, when you say a lot of really nice, pretty things and you don't have the emotion behind it, it's just pretty words. You don't mean it. And they want that connection. I still have a connection. Like I said, logically, I care. But emotionally, there's a problem. Because I can't really do that. Yeah. I can't give you what I don't have. You can't fix what isn't broken. It was never there. Like I said, I can say I love you. Yeah, absolutely. I can say those things. And I can mean them. Logically. But can I mean them emotionally? Mm, yes. But... difficult and then I get called a nice queen bitch somebody told me recently he said I think that you're affectionate just fine maybe you were giving them the energy that they were giving you perhaps or maybe I'm just that broken I don't know there's a lot of things wrong with me like a lot of things so, like, just being absolutely mental wouldn't be that far off base, I suppose. And the funny thing is, I want to get into psychology. And not really funny, but if I can offer somebody a deep, deeper level of understanding because I have this experience, why not? Because I do work in mental health and it's very hard to find mental health workers because it does eat at you. It does wear on you. It takes a certain type of person to do the job. I can do it. Not a problem. I even get assaulted and I still go back every day. Yeah. It, it's just a part of the risk that you run when you're, you know... When, when you have these people's lives in your hands. Because some days you do. And someday they might just hear a noise that hits a memory just right. And they just can't take it. And they can't cope. And they just punch you in the back of the head. It happens. I'm not even kidding. It literally happened just the other day to a nurse. I don't know what the cause of the... Of the hit was, but she got punched in the back of the head and lights out. Um, she went to the hospital. Because, you know, if you pass out when you're standing, you can't put up your hands to brace your fall. And I've been assaulted at work. I have scars on my arms now. I've been sexually assaulted. Like, not, you know, any sort of way but they grabbed me you know that that's still assault um technically being spit on is assault that's happened a bunch um but yeah like i want to leave the world a better place than i found it i know that sounds really altruistic for a person that's probably crazy but i do i want to help and if I can help in this way that not many other people can, dude, do it. And I've always wanted to get into psychology. I guess I just wanted to understand humanity better. But, yeah, that's a way of doing it. I mean, yeah, I do want to understand humanity better. That's why I took anatomy and physiology and biology and chemistry, and sociology, and psychology, and religion, and philosophy, like, 
I want to do good. I want to help. And if this is the way I can do that, awesome. I might not be able to cut somebody open and like do surgery on them because that's a lot to remember. That's why specialists exist because they can't remember all the structures of the body. Good God. What are veterinarians doing? They're memorizing a heck of a lot more than most people. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Dang. I don't think I have the memory for that. I don't think I have the capacity. But being a therapist, being a counselor, I can do that. I can do that. I can help people. So why not? I, I feel like I have a duty to help people if I can. Maybe that's just far out in left field, but... <coughs> I don't know. I do feel like I should. And I'm gonna try. But... In the meantime, like... My neck injury, I might not have a lot of time left. The ear injury was in 2005. My first MRI of it was in 2017. I recently got an x-ray, but... Mm, via, you know, a um, pain specialist, I'm going to request an MRI so that we can actually see it in depth again. Because um, it's been long enough. And... I'm starting to have neuropathy in my feet. There's just this weird numb strip on my toe. And just the other day, well, eh, almost a month ago now, that toe felt like it was dislocated. It was painful. And I would get this like throbbing and burning and stabbing and tingling just it was a lot. So, I mean, it went away, but what was causing it? Nerves. So, neuropathy does always start distal. Works its way in. And as the neuropathy turns to paralysis, I have to worry about my diaphragm being paralyzed and basically not breathing anymore. Yeah, you can be put on a ventilator, but as soon as the paralysis hits your heart, you're toast. They, they can't keep that beating. So dealing with my own mortality and not knowing how much time I have left, that kind of sucks. So like wanting to do the most good in the amount of time that I have left is, well, a guessing game. Because once neuropathy starts, like, it can take forever or it can be, like, instantaneous. <laughs> and I just, I don't know. And I won't. So, do what I can, when I can, where I can, right? I feel like every day is the same, though. I've only been at this job for, like, a year and it feels like five. Like... I can't tell you how long the month of February was. And it's the shortest month in the year, but oh my gosh, it felt like it was three months long. I swear, time, clocks, calendars at a mental institution are just useless. <sighs> but... You know, I've, I've worked in mental health before this job. And, yeah, there's days you go home crying. But you come back every day because you do make a difference. You are helping people. You're helping some of the most vulnerable people. And they're there because they need help. Yeah, they don't know how to say it. And they don't know how to take it even. But... You know, they're there for a reason. So, yeah. And I'm glad I'm not on that side of the glass, you know? Because there's not a whole lot of distance in between us and the clients, right? 
Have you ever seen Falling Up? It just takes enough bad stuff for a person to snap. And I, I work in a really bad environment. Not that it's bad, you know, because it's designed that way. It It's just bad because you run the risk of getting hit, like, all the time. You run the risk of getting verbally abused all the time. I mean, you do. Um, you run the risk of, like, just really bad stuff happening all the time. All the time. You gotta have eyes in the back of your head. And, like, yeah, it's just really bad. And considering my mental health, like, it, and considering my physical health, my injury, like, none of it's a good situation for me to be in. I I haven't gone back to a psychologist to get reevaluated as having antisocial personality disorder because I don't want to end up strapped to a bed somewhere. Like, I like picking out my socks and every day and the food that I eat. But, you know, if I was completely honest with them, I might lose those things. I might lose that freedom, so it's just not worth it. And like I said, there's no real medication that can help anyway. Like, there's just management. And I'm managing pretty well on my own. Like, for the most part, I've gotten rid of my depression. Which is kind of an interesting thing to talk about because I've been de severely depressed twice now. And the first time, I just woke up one day and decided, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. And I didn't. I just turned it off. How can you just turn off emotion? Pretty easy. And this time around, it got really messy before. Like I had to dig really deep. But, you know, not being around the person who was literally taking every opportunity to tell me what a piece of garbage I was, not being around that person anymore, um, helped a lot. Amazing. But I do still feel sad. Just, you know, not like... Not on a level that really causes any issue. Just kind of mm, more lonely, I guess. Not that I miss him. Not at all. But I do miss companionship. I could probably find that in a cat. <laughs> but, you know, I don't really have the hours for that. So, yeah, I guess I do have some feelings. Just not to the degree that others do. I feel very alien. I was watching an anime that, you know, made everything out to be very passionate. And then I wondered, like, are humans passionate creatures? Actually, yes, they are. Their passion tends to drive them to do things sometimes with other people, um, but, <laughs> yeah, I'm driven, sure, but not passionate, kind of gross, like, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing, man, that's why I just say that I'm ace, because, like, I don't, I don't want any of the bodily fluid exchange, But I do want the companionship in a more romantic way that I want to share and hold and be held. It's just none of the adult fun time stuff. I don't think that's so much to ask. In fact, I think that would make the bond stronger because you don't have to worry about your performance. And I'm not looking at you in that way. I'm not looking for you to perform. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that make the relationship stronger? Because you have you would likely have better communication. And your wants and needs would be met. Because not all the extra energy is going into that thing. 
I don't know. Sure, it sounds really innocent. Oh, I don't want sex. It's it's not that. It's that I don't find pleasure in it. Never have. With anyone. Ever. I mean, I've tried things. Lots of things. I just... Uh, I do like pain, though. Not necessarily sex, but pain. Because, I mean, yeah, you can get pain through sex, and that might make it exciting. But I just like pain in general because... It's a sensation. Makes me feel kind of alive. Gives me something to look forward to. I like a nice bruise. Because it's just a sensation. That's kind of messed up. There's worse things, though. But, I mean, if I was in that kind of a relationship, I'd be like, you know... Do whatever you want, just um, don't make me bleed, don't make me need stitches or broken bones, you know. Um, and uh, no still means no. And uh, yeah, do whatever you want, just, you know, keep it under the uniform. I don't want to explain things. I would be willing to give, uh, and I always am willing to give a lot of myself. A lot of myself. I'll turn myself inside out for someone. Because I just want to be loved. But I'll give you everything. I'll give you every little shred of myself. I know there's not a lot. And it never seems to be enough for anyone. But I'll give it to you give you whatever you want I'll make it happen I'm that type of person I'll make it happen but it's never enough because I just don't have the emotional input that people want why why do I need that emotions are so messy can't I just be logical it's so much easier it's so sanitary, utilitarian, black and white. I do like things being a little more black and white. I like things being organized. God, I love bins to organize my things into. <sighs> but life is very gray. There's a lot of gray in life. And mm, I don't. It's okay. I can make it work. But. Uh, I'm not saying my life would be complete with a companion. Obviously. Your happiness should not depend upon any external force. But. Comfort. Would be nice. I've only ever gotten that from one person. He's dead and that was more of a familial relationship he was my father figure he was my grandfather it wasn't romantic my mother never offered comfort you were a hassle if you hurt yourself and it's your fault you hurt yourself And my father was an authoritarian. No comfort to be found there either. And my siblings were just trying to figure out their own lives. So. I've. Even when. My grandfather was alive. And we lived with. In range of my extended family. I would spend time with my cousins a lot. Um, our parents would just drop all of us grandkids off at the grandparents and go grocery shopping or whatever, you know, ba free babysitter, having some times to themselves. And our grandparents didn't really mind. But I was always ostracized in that group too. Because I was small and I put up a good fight, so I got picked on because... I don't know. She found it more fun. A play toy that bites back is more fun. 
than one that submits. And she was also the school bully. So, like, I didn't get away from it. And then when my grandfather died and we moved, we became very isolated. And I felt very alone. And I never learned how to make friends. So, I don't have any of those, really. I feel very alone. Yeah. And maybe that's a good thing. Because maybe I'm just a little too messed up to really keep friends, to really have friends. Because if I shared my darker thoughts, well, like I said, there would be a bed waiting for me in a psych ward. So I don't. And I'm not going to. I'm not a danger to other people. Yeah, I know how to use a knife. And a knife is a lot quieter than a gun. But I wouldn't do that. I would like to help people, not hurt them. There is a line. I just... I'm tired. And I'm tired of being alone. Just a companion. Just companionship. That's all I want. And I'm not even allowed that. And I have all these hmm, sexual talents. And I am putting them to waste. And I just want a companion. I can't tell you how many nights I come home and I just wish I had someone to hold. Man, and I would be a catch. I'm never going to get emotionally overly attached. <sighs> Jeez. I just... I know. I know, it's a little too serious. It's a little too much. It's a little too kitsch. It's a little too unique. I wish I was lying. I really do. It'd be so much easier if I was lying. I was making it all up for attention. <sighs> but life is such. I'm telling you, my luck is so bad. Like, I keep imagining I'm just going to be driving down the road one day or walking down the street, just minding my own business in motion. Not around anybody, because, well, I don't get along with people. But, just minding my own damn business. And then something like a blue whale, or a deer, or a tank, is just going to drop out of the sky on top of me. And I'm going to have just enough time to look up and go, ah, shit. But not enough time to move out of the way. And it's just going to crush me, right? Just out of the blue. Like, how did a blue whale get there? Oh, it was being transported. No, no, a killer whale. A killer whale kills again. Only injures one. And somehow survives. But I didn't. I tell you, I've looked... Like, it's happened. I stop at a stop line. I look both ways twice. Still get plowed into. It's actually happened. I see people driving down the wrong way on the street frequently. I swear people forget how to drive the second their foot hits the pedal. But like, I see it a lot. 
And I want to get a dash cam, but I'm convinced that the second I get a dash cam, it's all going to disappear and smoke and mirrors and I'll never see it again. Like when you're trying to film a ghost, like the second you get good cameras, never again. Right? Like, so they'll be transporting a Sherman tank or something, right? And just, you know, a, a volatile, active shell that nobody found under the seat. And the whole thing just drops on me. And boom. I'm the only casualty. <laughs> Woman, we think, killed by tank. Decommissioned. <laughs> she got decommissioned from life. <laughs> Just like, go out like, what's his name? Herodotus? Uh, it was a Greek philosopher. He died because a hawk flew by and dropped a turtle on him. Because his dome was so shiny that the hawk thought it was a rock. And tried to break open the turtle on a rock. Instead, killing a man. Yeah, sounds about right for me. <laughs> like, I'm not even going to make it to dying from my injury, which I am actually afraid of because I do not want to die paralyzed in my own body. Like, not being able to move and not know for how long that condition is going to last. You know, recently I saw an article that Sweden has these um, pods that you can lay down in and they basically fill it with nitrogen and suffocate you. Neat, because then I could still donate my organs or donate my body to science because it's not like an injection where it's poisoning. So the organs would still be good. Yay. Because I want to be as useful as possible, even in death. Don't bury me. That gravestone's gonna go, like, un unmanned. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about me. And besides that, even if people did care, after three generations, no one's going to remember that it's there. No one's going to remember your name. You'll be gone. If you want to take my ashes and make, like, a, like a solitaire... <sighs> Ooh, excuse me. That'd be pretty rad. I wonder what color it would be. Black, right? Smoky quartz. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't want to take up space. I want to be useful. And my blood is O positive. I could help a lot of people. But I have a blood disorder where I have low blood volume but not low blood pressure. Because of the vasoconstrictive disorder that is resultant from the connective tissue disorder. Yeah. I run a pint low. But you wouldn't know. Until it drops. Oh man. Ooh. When my blood pressure drops, it's bad. I'll pass out. Because it's so on the edge anyway. <laughs> like. Yeah. But it's not like a, it's not like an unstable thing. It's not like it's a consistent problem. So yeah. <sighs> Again, with being a unicorn. Oh my gosh, this is a really long video. Well, I mean, I guess I did kind of want to go into it in a little more depth of like. I, I just kind of wanted to explain it for myself. Like, why is everything so weird? Because it just is. It's just how it's meant to be. I don't know. I don't want it. But here it is. <sighs> Whatever. But it's late. I should go to bed. So yeah, take heart that you aren't super flippin' weird. 
It doesn't win me anything. It just makes life an uphill battle. I know everybody wants to be special. But sometimes it's not worth it. But I mean, hey. Whatever floats your boat, just don't sink mine. Yeah. I think that's a good one. Later.